Good evening. The four-day insurrection at New York's Attica State Prison came to a tragic end this morning. Negotiations gave way to force, making this the bloodiest prison incident the country has seen in four decades. September 8th, 1971. A simple fight between two inmates would balloon into the largest prison uprising in the United States. During the fight, a correctional officer would intervene and in the process would be struck by one of the inmates involved. Following the incident, Warden Vincent Mancusi decided that the involved party would be taken to solitary confinement. But it wouldn't be so easy. Inmates would refuse all attempts of staff to take away the involved inmates, setting up what would be a deadly day in American history. We'll get to the next day when the incident explodes. But first, let's take a step back and take a look at the facility itself. Attica Correctional Facility is a maximum security prison within the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. Located in Attica, New York, a small town of just 2,500 people, it sits in western New York, about 35 miles from the Great Lakes city of Buffalo. Construction on the prison began in October 1929 and was completed two years later. The first prisoners to arrive were from another notorious New York prison, Sing Sing. The facility looks more like a castle than a prison. Surrounding the prison is a massive 30-foot wall, aptly named the Great Grey Wall, which is over a mile in length. The guard towers look more like they are keeping people out rather than in. With a medieval-inspired look to them, there is no double razor wire fence at this prison, just concrete. Inside the prison, it is designed like a big square with cell blocks on the exterior. Each cell block has its own designated recreation yard. At the center is a point where everything connects, called Times Square. Times Square would play an important part in the start of the riot. In total, the prison sits on 55 acres. Over the years, the population has swayed and has remained at about 2,000 inmates. Since 2016, there has only been single man cells. The mission statement of Attica Correctional Facility reads, enhance public safety by having incarcerated persons return home, less likely to revert to criminal behavior. Now that we have a better understanding at the facility itself, let's move on to September 9th, 1971. Following breakfast, inmates found out that they would be facing a unit lockdown once they returned to their cell block. Some prison staff were not notified of the change and allowed inmates to go toward the recreation yard. The gates were locked to the yard and inmates, fearing retaliation, attacked prison staff. The uprising had begun. Officer William Quinn suffered serious injuries during this initial exchange, which took place at Times Square. He would sadly pass away two days later. Quinn was the first officer in the incident to suffer serious injuries, but unfortunately not the last. The riot then spread like wildfire, and the inmates now had half the prison under their control. Once the area had been secured, leaders were elected. Among them was Frank Big Black Smith, who was appointed as head of security. One inmate, Elliot Barkley, was a major player in the negotiations between inmates and prison administration. The entire prison populace has set forth to change forever the ruthless brutalization and disregard for the lives of the prisoners here and throughout the United States. What has happened here is but the sound before the fury of those who are oppressed. He would not survive the uprising. Among the demands made, for better medical treatment, improvements in visitation, and an end of physical abuse by staff. It had been noted that black inmates were treated very poorly in comparison to their white counterparts. This was often attributed to the rural setting of the prison, which was mostly white, with most of the offenders coming from the New York metro area with a large minority population. Inmates requested Minister Louis Farrakhan from the Nation of Islam to represent them in negotiations with the government, but he declined. Attorney William Kunstler would step in and fill the role. Kunstler was a well-known lawyer who was the director of the ACLU. Some of his notable clients were the Mississippi Freedom Riders and Jack Ruby, the assassin of Lee Harvey Oswald. Black Panther leader Bobby Seale also made an appearance at the prison to show support, but he was often seen as a distraction by inmates and prison authorities. After some back and forth between inmates and government officials, authorities agreed to 28 demands. 
But the two most important, Fire in the Warden and Amnesty for all of those involved, would not happen. After three days, Governor Nelson Rockefeller, who refused to come to the prison, ordered the facility be retaken by force. Before we move on to that fateful day, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Russell G. Oswald, the prison commissioner, would oversee plans to end the riots. The final attempt to reach a settlement failed and at 946 AM on Monday, September 13, 1971, a bloodbath would ensue. Although Oswald did not notify the inmates that this would be the final attempt, maybe hoping to catch them off guard. Some say inmates may have surrendered if they knew what would come next. From the prison walls surrounding the yard, police and correctional officers would drop tear gas in the hopes of incapacitating the inmates. They would then toss smoke grenades into the yard, covering the area in a fog-like haze. They would open fire without knowing who or what they were shooting due to the smoke. After just 20 minutes, the smoke would clear and the prison was retaken. The death toll would be staggering. Over 100 men had been shot with 29 inmates and nine hostages dead in the prison yard. In addition to the deaths prior to Monday, the total death toll would be 32 inmates and 11 correctional officers. Governor Rockefeller claimed that the throats of the correctional officers had been slashed by the inmates prior to the assault on the prison fortress. In the final hours of the revolt, led primarily by blacks, the inmates murdered nine of their white hostages. 28 convicts were killed by state troopers and sheriff's deputies who regained control of the prison. It was later determined that all the officers killed during the assault on the prison were not killed by inmates, but rather bullets from the officers fired from the walls above. When later asked about his role in that day, Commissioner Oswald said, On a much smaller scale, I think I may have some feeling now of how Truman must have felt when he decided to drop the A-bomb, meaning that he had no good options, and he thought that people were going to die either way, regardless of what he did. Reprisals would be taken by correctional staff. In many accounts, the leaders of the uprising were killed by prison staff after surrendering. Charges would be pressed against 62 inmates. But after years of the incident dragging on, the subsequent governor of New York, Hugh Carey, pardoned all inmates and dismissed disciplinary actions against 20 officers. What do you think about what the governor did? Was this the right move? Let me know in the comments. Suits would be filed by the families of the deceased inmates, and a $12 million settlement was reached decades after the incident. A similar lawsuit was also settled with the families of the slain officers. Some of the concessions made during this incident by government officials remain in effect in the state of New York. Inmates are provided with more basic items, such as hygiene and better medical care. A grievance procedure was also put in place so policy violations by staff can be reported in an effective manner. There have been numerous pop culture references to this incident. John Lennon wrote a song, Attica State, in 1972, about his thoughts on the riot. Morgan Freeman and Samuel L. Jackson have each done movies including the Attica riot. Morgan's movie, Attica, was released in 1980. Against the Wall was released in 1994 and had Jackson playing an inmate in prison a major book about the riot was released in 2016, called Blood in the Water, which won a Pulitzer Prize. Ironically, the book was initially banned by New York prison officials, which was lifted under public pressure in 2022. The Attica prison riot left a blood-soaked stain on corrections across America. The prison had reached a boiling point, and a simple fight would push it over the edge. This was another Chasing Crime Profile. Thanks for watching. As always, see you next time.